I would love for this video to actually segue off my last video for. In my last video, I actually spoke about how to actually generate your own. <laughs> In my last video, I actually spoke about how to actually generate your own music using this OpenAI's jukebox using Google Collab. Somebody mentioned to me that I was saying the word collab wrong. In fact, it's collab from collaboration, but who cares? Just to clarify on all you newcomers on who I am, my name is David Andrew Griffiths. I'm a music producer from Swansea and I'm currently studying MA Sound in UWTSD. And the whole reason for this YouTube channel is literally the document for that. Regardless of any of these facts, I'd like to get straight into this video now. In this video, I'd actually like to speak about a piece of work which I have not finished yet. In fact, I don't know if I'm ever going to finish it, but it's just something I'd like to document with regards to this AI idea that I've got going on. Now, prior to starting this project, I actually created an open AI jukebox song inspired by Katy Perry and R&B. And I did not input any lyrics like I did in the last one. So there is no lyrics at all or any singing. However, this is what the OpenAI was able to create. Quite a decent sound, very simplistic. I then decided to beat match it. So it's about 105 BPM. And then I tuned it down to the key of B flat. And this is what that sounds like. Like that sound. So I decided to try and copy what I heard there. And this is what I was able to come up with myself. very similar. In fact, I copied it beat to beat, if that makes any sense. And I tried to match the bass as well. I did hear some plinky plonkies, but I don't know if I matched it correctly. This is what it sounded like at that point. You can't really hear it. There's like some of the pad sounds, which I decided to omit. No. Probably the best place to start is with the drums. Now we have got two kicks, two snares, two claps, one snap track. We have got two hi-hat loops from what I can see here. We got one percussive loop and yeah, I think we've got another loop somewhere. Yeah, we've got two loops and most of these are subgrouped into both snare and loop tracks. The kicks aren't subgrouped. Regardless, you don't really need to subgroup them. Now we've got one more attack kick, which sounds like this. And then we've got one more thumpy kick, which sounds like this. Now they both play an important role for the add attack. And of course it's a kick. This is what the first snare sounds like. This is what the second snare sounds like. Very trappy, very reminiscent of today's sort of music. Then we've also got like a clap track as well, which sounds like this. And we got another clap track. And we also have a snap track, which sort of adds a little bit more attack during the verses and pre-choruses. Moving on to the hi-hats, we got this first hi-hat loop. You can hear the panning there. We got the second hi-hat loop. And we also got this like sort of foley loop, which sounds like this. And I've added a lot of delay onto that. And we also got this sort of loop right here as well, which sounds like this. If you've made it this far, comment hair for I've actually had a haircut in the last few days, which is good. 
Most of the loops I use are from Echo Soundworks and Cymatics. They're very good, go and check them out. This is what the drums sound like in total. The drums are quite simplistic. Got quite a nice bounce to them due to the syncopation on the kick drum and the dotted delays on the loops. And yeah, it works with the track. Quickly moving on to the basses. Now, in my previous videos, I have actually spoken about how I process my basses and, you know, put a bit of order into them. And in this one, I have actually got two subs, one lead bass, and two sort of miscellaneous sort of basses. And this is what the first sub sounds like, very wide. And then the second one, which is slightly more narrow, this is what that sounds like. Then I've got another lead, which is very similar to that bass that we just listened to. However, it's slightly wider and it has a lot more attack. This is what that sounds like. Then on certain parts of different choruses, I've actually got this sort of miscellaneous brass stab bass, which sounds like this. Then on the verses, I have this sort of soul breakdown, Reese sort of bass sound, which sounds like this. Altogether, this is what the bass sounds like. Now, briefly looking at the keys, we have four main key patches. Now, we have got one in Anna 2 and the rest of them are in Massive. Now, I can sort of split them into sort of two sections where we've got the plinky plonky section and the more chordal sections. Starting off with the more chordal sounds, we have got a sort of road sound from Massive, which sounds like this. Then this is sort of followed with a sort of airy sound from Massive, which is underneath the first roads in the second part of the verse, which sounds like this. And then during the choruses, you hear more of the plinky plonky sounds from Anna 2, which sounds like this. And then the one from Massive, which sounds like this. Very subtle, but it makes a difference. This is what they all sound like. Guitars, I haven't added any guitars in this track yet. And in fact, I was meant to today. Uh, so I'm actually gonna add some guitars right now, just before I forget. Forget about the guitar track. I am deleting it right now. There we go. Bye bye. Bye bye. Leads. Um, you know, nothing special about these. These are all just uh, serum patches, either from, you know, ESW or from Splice. Uh, this is what they all sound like. This has got the first one. Second one. Third one. Can't really hear it that much, but it adds something. I don't know what it adds, to be honest. Pads, very chordal, you know, it fills it out just a little bit. Uh, I've got three sort of main pad sounds, uh, two of them from Omnisphere, one of them from Serum. They have actually been rendered out so that I can actually chop them up. So 
This is what the first pad sounds like. You know, very percussive. This is what the second pad sounds like. Very, very simplistic and very simple. This is what the third pad sounds like. Again, they're all very simplistic. This is what they all sound like together. In context. Other than a little bit of mixing, that is all I've done to this track. Now, what I'd actually like to do with you guys right now is to show you guys what I typically do when I've got an idea. I typically add a VST called Glitch, which says as follows. This is what it sounds like when you've got it enabled on a track. You know, this is a bit too over the top for what I want to do. So what I'm going to do is enable a different program called Stutter Edit. You know, I typically just mess around and see what I come up with and I might come up with something unique, I might come up with something which is completely out of the box. However, I think with this video today, I think I'm finished because I have not completed this track whatsoever. This video might have been a little bit mundane because, you know, I'm not really doing anything groundbreaking here. I'm just sort of documenting my work, literally for the sake of documenting my work. Please leave a comment for, it actually does help me to actually create better content and it actually informs me on who's actually watching and, you know, if it's actually engaging or not. That is it for now. I hope you guys liked it. Please leave a like and subscribe and I shall see you in the next video. I hope you guys have a good day.